To my beloved brethren and God's holy people across the globe, welcome to another program in the series, A Word to the Nation broadcast. I am Pastor Carol Wilson, your humble servant, and I encourage you to spare a few minutes out of your busy schedule and allow the Lord to speak to your hearts. Good morning, my beloved brethren and friends. I greet you well in the name of Jesus. There is a two-word phrase that is found in Scripture some 43 times that is worthy of our note this morning. You see, many of us have experienced challenging times. Life has been difficult. We have been battered and bruised, and many of us are at the point where we feel like throwing in the towel because our situation seems so hopeless and it appears as if there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Yet we are still here. The two word phrase I make reference to is, but God. This two word phrase will be the theme of my admonition this morning, but God. And my passage of meditation comes from Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. It reads, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient, we too all previously lived among them in our fleshy desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath, as the others were also. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he has for us, made us alive with Christ even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. What a contrast, a people that was hopelessly dead in trespasses and sins, we walked according to the ways of the world, according to the enemy of our souls, the spirit that continue to work in the children of disobedience. We were dead, yet living. We were all part of this evil reality. We were determined to carry out the tendencies of our flesh and thoughts because by nature we were children under wrath. We had the mindset of the flesh. Romans 8, 7 and 8 tells us that the mindset of the flesh is hostile to God because it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it is unable to do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It is clear to see that while we were in the flesh, we were enemies to God. 1 John 2 15 to 17 says do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him for everything in the world is the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of one's possessions is not from the father but it's of the world and the world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. There are such all about us. 
those who exhibit the form and motions of life but are really without it. Men call them alive, but God calls them dead. Revelation 3, 3b. I know your works. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. And these thus chided were Christian by profession. They were not without activity, for their works are spoken of. They were not without accepted beliefs and views, orthodoxy, for they had the name of true disciples still. But their works, when judged, were found to be dead works, works fashioned in the energy of the flesh, perhaps rather than in the power of the Spirit. They were prompted by the zeal of religious ambition, maybe rather than by the fire of love. At all occasions, their service was so defective that neither their soundness nor their activity could save them from the awful sentence of death. Then comes verse 4. But God. A little English grammar here. The word but is a conjunction and the conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, or clauses together. We use but to link items which are the same grammatical type, but is used to connect ideas that compare and contrast. A sentence of example, all doors are sealed, but there is still a way out. Despite the reality that stares you in the face, there is a method of escape. This is what this two-word phrase is implying. The fact is that mankind is hopelessly condemned by sin with the sure sentence of death hanging over him. But God. God is our only route of escape. The remaining portion of our scripture reading from verse 4 says, But God, our God is rich in mercy, and because of his undying unconditional love for mankind, purpose within himself to transform us from the sentence of death to abundant life in Christ Jesus' his Son. He has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might display the infinite riches of his grace to us through Christ Jesus. We are clearly reminded that our salvation is not as a result of our own effort but instead it is a gift from God, an unmerited favor in demonstration of his love. This is activated by faith in a finished work and not by our human effort so that no one can boast. In response to our salvation, we must engage in good works. Because of what God has done on account of his unconditional love, we have become converted from the dead that is living to the living that is dead. Don't you get confused now. Listen carefully. At the first stage, although we were alive in the flesh, we were dead in trespasses and sins. So we were the dead that was living. Now that we have accepted his atonement through faith in him, we become the living that is actually dead. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Crucifixion certainly means death. In a very real Though mystical sense, Paul had been crucified with Christ 
in his crucifixion on Calvary and had become dead with him. Nor was he alone in this. He was constantly addressing his fellow Christians as those that were dead. Colossians 3, 3 and 4 For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. These are similar passages emphasizing in the most solemn manner the fact that the believer has died in Christ. But this death is everywhere represented as the counterpart and condition of a far more exalted life than was ever known before. If you are feeling a sense of discouragement and hopelessness this morning, I encourage you to adopt this two-word phrase and apply it to every area of your life and declare to yourself, my present situation is one living mess, but God. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for a Word to the Nation broadcast, B135. This is your brother and friend, Carol Wilson, saying, Have a happy Sabbath, a fantastic day, and may the God of heaven bless you real good. Peace and love to you all.